start shortly on my far right. My name is Lese Homo Kubela. I'm the ANC caucus spokesperson. On the far right is uh, Comrade Devo Hojwala, TJ. He's the spokesperson of the ANC. And then uh, the one who's sitting in the middle between myself and Joala is the deputy chairperson of the ANC in the region, but also is the leader of the ANC in council. So I, I wanted us to, because when I speak, interact with most of you, it seems as if you are unable to understand the, the distinction. Of course, I'm also the chair of the Youth League, but this is not a Youth League press conference. I'm the spokesperson of the ANC in Kansen. So I speak on behalf of the ANC with matters that relate to Kansen. Comrade Joala speaks on behalf of the ANC with all matters, either mem uh, issues of the ANC itself or issues affecting the ANC. And obviously, Comrade Mapiti is, is the most senior. He's the deputy chairperson of the ANC in the region and is the leader of Kansen. We'll start with our, with our press conference. I must tell you that we're not going to make flimsy, flimsy claims. We're going to even furnish you with all documentary evidence of everything that we're going to speak about. Of course, we'll do that as soon as we're done with the press conference. We'll also furnish you with the, with the statement. We'll give you the statement uh, that will be read by the deputy chairperson. This proof that we're speaking about with is a proof of the mayor being part part of the, the interviewing panel and all other issues, how he scored the people who were interviewed and so forth. So, so that you are able to live with something that will assist you. But I can tell you that this is nothing. We are just knocking at the door of the, of the mayor who is about to resign. I think after we prove he was there, he has made the commitment to the people of Swan and South Africa. He must start like uh, other people preparing his resignation letter. Comrade Mapiti will read the statement. Thank you. Thanks, uh, members of the media and the, our friends. The ancient son feel vindicated with the current brohaha surrounding the appointment of Marietta Okam as the chief of staff uh, of the office of the mayor, Solim Simang. We raised the issue of the appointment of Okam in September 2016, and we were met with all sorts of insult and political point scoring Inondos by Solo Musiman. When confronted with this allegation, Musiman accused the ANC of creating a diversionary tactic intended to distract the DA from its mandate, whilst he knew very well, well that he was in fact creating a smokescreen as to shield his boss, Mariette Okam. It is also worth noting that Musiman said in the panel that appointed Okam, a matter which is against the regulation of, on the appointment of uh, senior managers in local government. He was accompanied by MMC Silas Brink and acting city manager Lindy Wekwen. He further scored her the highest and effect gave her maximum point. It is frivolous that the mayor and his drum majorates said in the panel that appointed Wokam. Wokam, who has an imaginary, an imaginary bachelor's de degree, and also has listed James Self, who is the federal chairman of a as a reference. It is a criminal that the city did not apply for the waiver as informed by the local government uh, uh, act, including the policy of the city in the process of appointing worker. All this points to a systematic and a dysfunctional administration led by an incompetent deploy of the party that always portrays itself as a clean governing structures. The DA continues to limp from one dis disaster to, uh, to another in all spheres. We further called on the public protector advocate uh, uh, Mukwebane to release a finding into this case as we have already made submission to her as far as 2016. Whilst he is taking time in resolving this matter, Ogam continues to draw a salary of 1.7 million rands and is, is directing the city into a state of paralysis and collapse. The ANC calls for the Wokam to pay back every cent into her account in, into the municipal co uh, coffers. In reality, the mayor of Tswani is Marietta Wokam. This explains why her party went out of its way to break the law so that she is located in the office of the mayor so that she can babysit him and direct the city 
from the background by employing incompetent people to come to come and serve nefarious interest impact badly on the provision of service delivery, which explains why the city is in the state of paralysis. This kind of actions have direct consequences and impact and impact badly on the good image the city of Tan enjoyed over the years. As the NC called for adequate action to be taken against the chief of staff, the immediate resignation of Solomon Simang and that and that the group had human capital be fired with immediate effect. Musimang must resign for the mere fact that he presided over a, a farce of an interview and that he broke he has broken his oath of office. Come to grips with the issue of governance. I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we take questions, I think We'll give you the statement so that you are able to familiarize yourself if you will have missed some points. And then we'll also, uh, uh, Comrade Joanna will lead the evidence that you will be finished with. And I think uh, you must give them now. You must give members of the media now as Joanna will take them through. Well, obviously, you will be able to sit down and, and go through. Yes. Look, um, have everyone received, no? Yes, but they can. So that we don't, we don't disrupt the flow of, uh, of the press brief. Okay. Look, uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Lissi. Uh, as you would see in the documents that are before yourselves there, that uh, not only are we dealing with the, the mayor of a metro who is uh, disingenuous, but uh, a kind of person who I would refer to as a pathological liar, who knowingly and deliberately misled the people of the city and the people of the republic about his involvement in the appointment of a person who is not qualified to be in that office. Among other things that you'll find uh, in front of yourself is a, a series of uh, empirical evidence and uh, proof of, uh, to, through documentation that uh, stipulates in many ways, but pointing out to the same point that uh, there has been fraudulent activities, there has been lies, they, that they've been extended and there has been that one who is uh, Mareta Okamp ends up being a chief of staff and the mayor had, uh, who the mayor had uh, lied to have been part of uh, the process of appointing him. The first document that you, you will find there is the, a letter or a document which you want or candidates feel when they go for an assessment after they've been through the the interview process. In her own handwriting, Mareta Ogam writes that uh, and states categorically that she has a BTEC degree qualification. That is a document in her own handwriting. So there is no ambiguity or or facts that uh, just been, I'm sure you have this document. If you can go to the second page of the document, where it says Pijima. Uh, you will realize that uh, Gijima wrote to this person called Rian Zema. And in that they said, please send me the document complete by, by Marietta Uokam, known as Marietta, and the, uh, when she came for assessment. Meaning, meaning this one, it was her own handwriting. So there's no two ways about it. It came from herself with her own handwriting, stating that she has a... Uh, she has uh, that qualification of BTEC. You will see, if you fast forward a little bit, just to illustrate further, there's a memorandum written on the 9th of February this year, 18 months 
uh, almost 18 months after she was appointed, which was uh, directed to herself by the city manager. In this document, the city manager clearly and simply requests um, the qualifications, her qualifications which were in question, which had not arrived uh, at HR to be finished within a short period of time, given the fact that she had been sitting in the office, as the city manager stated, that for 16 months you have been in this office and you are here to submit your qualification, please do so uh, urgently. And uh, that was not met with any action or proof of such qualification um, uh, by, uh, uh, from herself. On uh, the second page of that document is a verification report which uh, was done by an independent organization on behalf of the city. Uh, through this report, we gather that the highest qualification that would have been received by yourself is only a, docu uh, a document called the National Secondary Certificate by Omalus, which is a, a metric equivalent. So that is another proof. Uh, there is a document that deals with the of, of scoring uh, by the interviewers. So this document that you find here, you want to come back to the mayor's statement around his involvement. He pleaded ignorance to the matter. He said he wasn't part of it. He doesn't know anything. This document shows who were part of the interviewers, how they scored. Uh, among other things, it was the mayor further says that now he remembers. Uh, later he said he remembers, he was part of it. Now he says uh, he was, they were only finished with a, a limited information around the candidates when they were interviewing. When you go to the page four, the same document, the, it says there's a heading called work standard and the rating scale. So there is one to five uh, scale that one is used uh, from number one. The candidate would be scored one if she or he proves uh, no evidence of uh, competency display or if it displays the lowest level of competency around what she's being asked and, and how the CV is being presented. And number five is uh, uh, excellent, which uh, equals to uh, the, the candidate exceeds the requirements. Now, the requirements talk to the CV, the background, the work experience that the person and the candidate would have had uh, before the interview, and how they would have answered the questions. And you will be surprised uh, to learn that the mayor uh, is among the top two people who scored the candidate out of the five interviewers. He scored the candidate 23 points out of the possible 25. And then only uh, the only other person who scored over who scored uh, over 20 was uh, MMC Brink, who scored uh, 24. And other uh, interviewers were scoring them uh, way below 20. So you'll see there that uh, he deliberately and knowingly <clears throat> would have uh, scored her uh, based on the evidence. So you can't go and interview a person and say they exceed uh, the requirements. And part of the requirements was a qualification and the, uh, that, that, that is a, a basis of, uh, of the application and the shortlisting in the first instance. So that is one overwhelming evidence that uh, we have uh, came across. So there is also a few other documents, including her CV, where she states um, her qualifications and her background. Uh, surprising enough, people must remember that part of the things and requirements and your job description when you are in the office of the mayor is to manage the budget. So the highest, uh, the longest place where she has ever worked was her being a chief whip uh, of a, of a uh, opposition which we know the budget would have been a few hundreds of thousands, if any. No, no uh, if there would be a budget of interaction to buy cold drinks and in meetings and so on, it will be a few thousands. Now, the office of the mayor, you have a, 
a very big, large, uh, a very large uh, workforce. Among the workforce is a direct report to the chief of staff. And you must say that uh, part of the, the responsibility and people who would be reporting to the chief of staff are economists. Some of them have double master's degrees. And they had direct reports, not less than four of them. Uh, not less than four of the minimum uh, uh, qualifications that they hold currently or at the time of the interview was honors degree. And two of them have double master's degrees. And this person has to be uh, overseeing such, uh, uh, such uh, uh, people who with a high level of competence and experience. And we must also state that the office of the mayor's budget is a couple of hundreds of millions of friends. So it's not a, that she was going to run a spaza shop or office of the mayor uh, alone with the mayor and a, and a secretary. So it's a very big organization on its own. So her CV, just for her being shortlisted, irrespective of its political office, she was not, she was not going to employ it as a politician herself. Uh, she was going to employ it as an administrator in the office of, the, of a politician. So that also, even the waiver, when you applied, we were going to, uh, to, 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 to question in council that on what basis are you uh, lowering the bars? Because over the past 20 years of the uh, ANC government, uh, in, 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 in leading the, the city, at least over the last 15 years since we changed the, the, the model to the current uh, administration of executive mayor and MMCs, you would know that all the chief of staff, whether acting or permanent, none of them had uh, a qualification lower than honors degree. We have had uh, chief of staff with a master's degrees and double master's degrees, in some instance with PhDs. So you can't, any of the admin, uh, political offices, which are three political offices uh, in the city, which is the office of the chief, office of the speaker, and office of the executive mayor. Consistently, people who would be occupying the highest administrative position in those uh, offices would have had very senior uh, 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 qualifications and a very uh, a long-term uh, proven track record in administrative roles. So I'll leave it at that. There is uh, empirical evidence in front of you, overwhelming evidence that proves that uh, uh, the, 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 the company the statement which the Comrade Mabiti have uh, uh, read earlier. No, maybe, maybe just to add uh, this last one, which is very, very important. It is what you call uh, offer of employment as a chief of staff. If you remember Executive Mayor what he said yesterday, he said the following. If it can be proven that one, he was aware that, the, that the Mar Marietta Ogham did not have qualification. Two, that indeed, if indeed she did not have qualification, she was aware uh, that uh, there was uh, a waiver. Thirdly, that she he also influenced the appointment. Now, this, this is one of the issues that we want to prove. When you are appointed on a waiver, a waiver is when you waive uh, whatever requirements in terms of qualification. The appointment letter is very clear that you are appointed on a period of five years on the basis of a waiver, and then you must ensure that within five years you obtain the necessary qualification. Meaning, this appointment does not talk to that. The second issue, which I think uh, the mayor must just do an honorable thing and resign with immediate effect, is the fact that if you go to regulate, regulations on the appointment of senior managers, it says the following. If you go to section 12, it says one, if you are this, the panel for the appointment of this municipal manager, the panel must comprise of five and one must be an outside. In this case, indeed, council took a resolution that it will be the executive mayor who will chair the panel, uh, two MMCs, and one
must be part of the panel. Marietta is not one of the people who report directly to the city manager. Meaning, he did not, one, he, he, in terms of the regulations, the mayor was not supposed to be part of the panel for the direct report of the city manager. Marietta is not even reporting direct to the city manager. But the mayor decided to be part of the interviews. What, what was the reason in terms of this documentation? Was only to score her high so that uh, uh, if I am sitting there, I'm in, I'm in uh, MMC. If I'm sitting there, I'm an official. The mayor scored this individual the highest. In actual fact, uh, the mayor is the one who is influencing everybody to follow suit. Now I'm saying, on the basis of his own admission, the executive must just do the honorable thing and resign, based on this uh, information that we have given you. Thank you. Uh, hey, we saw your park where, <coughs> where you are parking, uh, and I'm sure most of you here have uh, post metric qualifications. Eh? ENCA will not have hired you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, SABC will not have hired you. Uh, you are parking polo vivos. I'm sure you are not even earning close to 500,000 a year. Eh? Looking at the cars that you are parking outside. <laughs> hmm? A person who is without uh, uh, any post metric qualification is earning 1 point something million a year. 1.7 million a year. And, and we have provided with all, we have provided you with all, all the documentary evidence that is sitting next to you. We are very clear. Actually, here we want to demonstrate one thing. One is that uh, we've always made this point that Solim Simanga is not the mayor of Swan. We've always said it. We have said to you that Soli is not the mayor of Swan, that Marietta Okamb is the mayor of Swan. This is why we are saying that. Marietta has been a boss of Soli for over 10 years. She was a chief whip of the DA in council. Yes. Of, uh, of of the DA in council for over 10 years, solely and other councillors reporting to her. That's the first thing. The second thing is that when this administration was uh, was put into power, Marietta was a, was a councillor of the DA. She was then appointed as an MMC. We made an outcry to say that this, uh, this executive that we have appointed is Lily White. Lily, Lily White. They then made a U-turn, they removed her. Where did they remove her? They place her directly in the office of the mayor. The position that she was given, which she is not qualified for, which they had to break the law for, places her directly in the office of the mayor so that she babysits the puppet, ensures that the puppet is on the string and toes the party line and tells her what to do, where to go, and how to do certain things. And, and that's why we've always said that Soli is not the mayor of Tuan, Marietta is the mayor of Tuan. And that is why the DA has gone at length to break the law. Firstly, what we are going to do, we are going to open a case. When we live here, we are opening a case of fraud. When you feel with your own hand that you have a B-tech, so that you mislead the people who are shortlisting, Gijima, which were the ones who were contracted by the city of Tuan to be the one that begins to receive applications and to also shortlist. Asked her that she must actually fill a form. In that form which she, fi she filled with her own hand, she claims that she has a degree or stroke B-Tech, that she has a B-Tech, and therefore, and, and therefore that is fraud. She has been drawing a salary of 1.7 million. That money must be paid back into the coffers of the city. We see that she must be fired. Firing her is not enough, but every little cent that she got from the city of Tswane as a result of this particular position. She must pay it back, every cent of it, she must pay it back into the coffers of the city. It must be paid so that it, it builds RDP houses. The second thing is that we have proven that Soli, uh, the, the mayor, was part of this particular panel. If you look at the, the paper we have given you, firstly you must, call, you must give a person points on the fact that by, by looking at her qualify, qualifications, you can see that she qualifies. She has given her maximum points on that, that she has seen her application, she has seen her qualification, that she qualifies before interviewing her verbally. So we are calling for Soli to resign, but not only Soli. There's another person that we are, we are living here, Gerald Shingange, the head of HR here in the city. Here in the city, because Gerald was working hand in glove 
with the Gijima people when they were shortlisting. He was very much aware that this person does not have a post uh, metric qualification, but they went ahead, gave an offer, and every Gerald must also resign. This is the same person who is used to fire black people in the. So, so in Swan, this is the message that the DA is communicating that people are not, are not actually employed on the basis of their competency. They are communicating a message of voter, a message of all the apartheid uh, architects, that white people, as if, even if they don't have a qualification, they can run institutions, that they don't need qualification. Marietta is white. It's an African female. She's put there on the basis of the color of her skin. It's Saudi. So what the DA has put in, in here is Saudi. We have a Saudi here in Tswane, put by the DA administration. They have put Saudi, we have a Saudi sitting, we are sitting with the Saudi. The first appointment that Soli makes as a mayor, which we, he made in 2016 in September, he makes an appointment of uh, Marietta Okam, communicating a message to the citizens of Tswane that he intends to build on a foundation of collapse. You can imagine being given advice by a person who has no metric, who has no uh, post-metric qualification, how to run such a smooth, uh, such, a, such a big institution as the city of Tuan. And that is why we have come out here. And this is nothing. We are coming. We want to warn the DA now. We are coming very hard. This is nothing. If you think this is the only proof we have on that, we are just focusing on this matter. We are coming very hard. Because our people in Mamelodi, as you will have seen, there are demonstrations. There are no services. Our people in, in the townships, there are no services that are taking place. Our people in the city, highly qualified professionals, they are being fired every day. 5,000 or more of people who were working as EPWP, they were replaced by DA volunteers. Our people's lives are put on a lottery system. We are coming very hard. We are coming very hard. We are not going to leave a, a, anything lying. Also here, it's also the, it's all, they are running a, 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 a brother bond pyramid scheme here in Swan. And we are going to prove it to you. A brother bond pyramid scheme here in Swan. Afrikaner, English, white people owned companies are being put and placed there. But for now, we are focusing on the issue of, so that we are not all over. We are focusing on the issue of, of, of Okam. I wish to welcome the whip uh, of the ANC, Com uh, Comrade Arun, uh, who, who, who just joined us. She is occupying the same position that uh, Marietta occupied for 10 years as the boss of Tswan. Obviously, when you are a whip of a party, there are no qualifications. But when you are an official, because he's not earning anything, Arun, from the ANC, the government uh, council is not giving him anything. So. We wanted to put these things on record, we we're not bluffing, but, but we must also condemn members of the media. You are not coming here, most of you, on this issue for the first time. Yeah, yeah on this issue. You are not coming here on this issue for the first time. You know why the EFF has disappeared? The EFF disappeared because they rubber-stamped this decision. They were party, you were in council, you don't report. You know, we have been monitoring what you are reporting. The EFF in council the day where some of us, they, they threatened to remove us, where there was chaos in council, where we were asking that Marietta can be part, you were there. The first council, the second council sitting, you were there on the issue of Marietta. What did the EFF do? They were supporting that particular decision. Now they see a certain journalist, Mashati, who decided to publish this thing on, her own, on his or her own accord. Now they want to... Actually, that thing when they were storming into, they were not storming into a meeting with Soli. How did they know that Soli is having a meeting? It was, it was a coalition meeting. That meeting was a coalition meeting. They were meeting to discuss issues of coalition, how the EFF and the DA must work together. Because in council, we can give you transcripts. They accepted the decision. Now that we tell them we have transcripts that they supported the decision, what do they do? They have since disappeared. You are not with them now. Eh? The EFF, hypocrites, hypocrites of no, who have subjected the city of Tswane to be run by a person who does not have a post metric qualification. You can go to them and also you can visit the archives. What was the attitude, what does their attitude as the party on the appointment of, of, of Ogham? You can see it for yourself.
the tweet of Floyd Shibambo is extremely unfortunate. Shem, he does not know that those people are just sleeping in cancer. You are not reporting. You see them, they are sleeping. When they say, hey, we are voting, hey, 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 yo. <coughs> if you want to see Uba game waking up, you will see him waking up during voting. Voting, when they vote. When they say debate, they are, huh, they are sleeping, all of them. EFF sleeping, all of them. They are, when they say vote, they wake up. So we are raising this thing because, and we are saying that we have raised it before. You are not also following up yourself as members of the media, the watchdog of our democracy. You are not following up with the office of Mukweban, advocate Mukweban, public protector. Why are you not following up? Because the public protector is sleeping on duty. The matter reported to her by ourselves in 2016. You can imagine mm -hmm. how much is... Uh, in September 20, 2016. In, in 20, in 28, on the 28th of September 2016, she's still in... What, what is there to investigate? When you place a person on leave, like the city <coughs> has done, because it's simple, Marietta, just go and fetch your VTEC that you say you have. Just fetch it from, if it's under the mattress. Eh? Agree, you can put it under the mattress or on top of the room divider. Eh? Just go and fetch it. If ever there was a robbery, it's gone. Just go and requ request it from, from the university that you obtained it from. And give it to her one day, just one day. You don't need to put the person on leave. No, you can't do it. The person just says, oh, sorry, it might have been a problem when I was emailing. I did not attach. Let me go and fetch the attachment. So why are you placing a person on leave? Thank you very much. We'll take questions. Just Comrade the, Aron, yeah, Comrade Aron will, 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 will add, and then we'll take questions yeah. and so forth. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks, uh, Councillor Mokubeba. I think there's one salient point that uh, is not said in the media. I think it was a uh, minister... Pravin Koren, who spoke about the cooling of period of councillors. Uh, when you leave council, you must, even even politicians, ministers, when you leave your seat, you must have a six months cooling of period, uh, which most of the DA councillors are appointed as officials. They leave today, tomorrow they're appointed. I think there will be one executive director who's going to be appointed in the office of the speaker, uh, Councillor Peach, is going to take one of the senior positions. Uh, they've appointed one of the business advisors in the It speaks to what they've been accusing the ANC about, which is called cater deployment. And they're doing it with impunity. Uh, and there's nothing that comes from the media to speak about those ills uh, that we're experiencing here in the city of Tswane. Uh, I, I think we, we, you spoke at length, and, and, and I listened to what uh, you were saying with regard to how the DA governs uh, this city and how they want to bring it to its knees. Because we spoke to, to the issue of uh, uh, not necessarily... Uh, only the appointment of Marietta uh, Okam. The issue of the executive mayor when he goes to the public and says he wants to resign, there are two things that must come out of that uh, statement. He either lies to the public uh, and tries to buy time or he must come out and, and say Marietta misrepresented her qualifications and she must, be, she must not be afforded an opportunity to go on leave. She must be fired immediately. Now, we have been uh, delayed, I don't know for what reason, uh, he knows the story. You can't appoint the person who's going to be your advice and you don't know their qualifications. I think that's the first engagement that you have with whoever that you want to, to sit in your office. And, and this is a, it's a political appointee. It's a preferred candidate. Mm -hmm. Therefore, how do you appoint somebody that you prefer without qualifications? Therefore, the mayor knew that Marietta doesn't uh, have prerequisite skills to be in that office. Hence, Councillor Matsen emphasized the point that he went ahead and sit in those interviews so that he can ensure that uh, Marietta is scored high and he took along Councillor Brink, uh, who's uh, one of the people that are key in running the city. Uh, and, and one thing that we're going to see in the next few months, it's what comes from the city manager's office. He's really, really uh, fighting back about things that are happening. And all these intra-party struggles are making us not to enjoy the benefits of service delivery, rolling out opportunities. There's, not, there's nothing that is happening in the city of Swami. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much. I think we'll take a round of questions. And then from that, from that round of questions, then if ever there's a second round, we'll close the interview so that we, we give you enough time you can rest. We are coming, we are coming very hard with other things here. Yeah. Uh, you must identify yourself, your publication, media house, and then, yeah, then you ask your question. How have these documents been verified? 
And secondly, uh, just the dispute over the payment, is it 1.2 or 1.8? Yeah. No, the court can say this is 1.2. And you say 1.7. Yeah. yeah. Another question? Okay. Um, after speaking to COPTA, COPTA says according to the Municipal Assistance Act, a waiver, on the issue of a waiver, a waiver is only required when a manager is reporting to the city manager. But OCAMP doesn't need a waiver because she reports directly to the EM. So I want to know, has that always been the case that a chief of staff reports directly to the EM and not the city manager? And if that is the case, according to the regulations, if she reports to the EM, should the EM also form part of the interview panel? I hope you understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other questions? Yeah, let's deal with the 1.7 million. And, uh, Afro, and Afro, 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 Afro media. Uh, when you appointed the chief of staff, uh, there's what we call support that accompanies that position. Uh, you appointed an executive director. There are there are there are benefits that comes with uh, that appointment. Therefore, you can you can only limit it to the uh, to the figures uh, that she takes. But there are other resources support staff, uh, researcher, secretary, executive secretary, PA, they amount to 1.7 million. And I think the, 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 the amount pointed out by Councillor Makubela is, is very correct. Uh, they don't look at the salary only. Look at the staff, the entire staff that supports the office. Uh, and this is one person that uh, has, uh, she's very, she likes power and control. There was a report that came to council that was kicked out by the ANC office where Councillor Ocamp insisted that she wanted to report directly to the city manager, sits in the top management of the city, uh, which was something unheard of. It's accounting officer with service delivery departments that sits in the top management of the city. Uh, therefore, the contradiction lies in there, uh, that she wanted to bring a report where she wanted to report directly to, to the city manager and insist as one of the uh, highest office. This is what she says in the corridors of the city, that she occupies the highest office in the city. Therefore, she must be respected. The 1.7 million pounds of you are correct in that. No, maybe in relation to the waiver, let, let me just explain to you, uh, uh, Robesan. Just go to the regulation of the appointment of uh, senior managers. It's very clear, particularly if you go to to section 12. In fact, uh, I thought I would open it so that I can read it here. Firstly, when we are talking about the waiver of a city manager or a direct report, because this one we are supposed to go to the to 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 COCTA to ask for that waiver, if and not waiver in not only in terms of yeah the qualifications and so on. Let me indicate. Let me demonstrate. Like for example, the city manager did not have the the full requirements of the post which is one in terms of financial requirements. And they applied to the city, to, 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 to COCTA to waive that particular requirement. The chief of staff in the city of Swan is a direct report to the city manager. He did not have those particular requirements. The requirements are you must have a, a national diploma in traffic policy. That is why now she cannot even be saluted by his, uh, Junior. her juniors because it is a requirement. Now they apply to the to 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 to, to the national department to waive. <clears throat> now we go to a certain level. If, for example, you advise. And that requirement was that one should have a post metric. And this comes an individual who have got only Maramato. For that position which gives him 1.2 million. It means this individual does not uh, uh, meet the, the requirements. In terms of our own internal policy, now I'm, not, I'm no longer talking about the regulations. In terms of our own internal policy, uh, the individual must be, the requirements must be waived. Here in the city of Swan, any other position below 
that of a direct report, you can waive in terms of the policy. <clears throat> even, even if it is a, an assistant director or a functional head, where they've advertised position, they said, we want a three-year uh, diploma or degree. You have to, 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 to what do you call it? You have to, to, to waive. We can even give you an example of a mere functional head, a person at the level of a very low level, whom uh, that individual in terms of qualification, maybe the individual does not qualify. That person you can waive at that particular level. Now I'm saying here, in this case, even the letter of appointment is very clear that you don't meet these requirements. We give you a period, not in terms of the police, not more than five years to obtain your qualification. If, and the, the, and the letter is very clear, if you don't obtain those qualifications within that particular period, you will be relegated to a position on the same level in terms of requirements to that particular position. Meaning if, for example, I am a, I'm a chief of staff, within five years I don't obtain those qualifications. Meaning they are going to look into a position which is equivalent to metric. You might be a cleaner, if a cleaner want metric, or you might be an admin officer. That's how the policy works. And that is why the mayor is saying, he wants to check in the record whether this individual at that point in time, was there any waiver? I'm saying you can't check at that point in time. Even if you can check it now, if it was not there, uh, you, can't re you can't do it retrospectively. <coughs> you must do it at the same time. At the same time, you must say you don't qualify. But because this letter make an assumption, as uh, our colleague has just said, that this person qualifies, you have got a B-Tech degree. That is why there was no need for waiver, according to them meaning this is a serious criminal offense for one to, 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 to lie that indeed she has got a, a, a B tech degree whilst the individual does not have. Actually, uh, just there's, to another, take another, there's, another, there's, another, there's another point that, that I think the media, uh, uh, they, they, and they are aware of it, they must just go to their archives uh, so that we deal with selective mail. Ockham acted in the position before. Yes. Ockham resigned today. The following day, without being a, 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 an employee no, of, uh, of the city, and that's what we, we've been raising, is there, if you check on your archives. Ockham then is appointed to act. Before even the interviews and the applications and the advertisement of the post, already it's prejudiced. She's acting in a position. She was acting in this before being appointed. She resigns as a councillor, effective immediately is, is appointed to act. Then there's a woman who is pregnant, eh, who was the highly qualified woman. Eh, in, and we said that this is an infringement to the rights of women. She is then pushed out, that woman. Okam then acts. Hmm? Dora is, is told, no, you are four months pregnant. Uh, your reasoning because of your pregnancy, because she was four months pregnant. Eh? Just go home. We will put somebody to act. Ockham is 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 put there to act. The first, the first, first uh, gross uh, breaking of the law, and that's what we reported with the public protector. That because by the regulation you can't appoint somebody who's not an employee of the city to act in a position. That you can just willy nilly go to a taxi rank. That you are appointing a person to act as a messenger, even a messenger. That person must already be. Uh, an employee of the city. So Ockham was already was acting before she even applied for the position. So Soli says, I don't know where, I don't, I don't know where, uh, whether she, did, she had qualifications. It's a lie. It's a blue DA lie. Because you appointed this person to act. Where did you, where did you source her out from? You source her out from somewhere within the ranks of the DA because she's your boss. In terms of the apartheid thing, she's the madam, madam of Soli. She, Soli makes tea for her. Yeah, you can ask uh, sample people in the office. Soli makes tea for Ockham. She even sends her to go and just print the papers there in the office. So this person is, is, is appointed to act. Then from there we raise the issue that this person can be appointed. You are breaking the law. 
Firstly, Aaron says there's a cooling off period by legislation, six months cooling off period. You resign as a councillor, you must wait for six months before you can work for any government institution. No, effective immediately you are appointed to act. You are not even an employee. So, so by the time you go to, you, you actually advertise, it was just, they were just going through the motions, you know. They were going through the motions. It was just, uh, the interviews were just rubber stamping, just to do things. Can they know? They are rubber stamping on corruption and fraud and theft and crime. That's what they were doing. So let's not forget that part. This person was called to act and, 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 and so forth. Yeah. Uh, just to <coughs> respond to Smart, look, we, we are not dealing with Gupta emails, uh, leaked emails somewhere here. When you ask about the evidence, it's not a leaked thing that uh, it's neither here nor there, subjective and so on. These are authentic communique evidence documents that uh, you as the members of the media, you just phone any of the offices that you are referring to. You phone that Kijima um, assessment center and say, we have a communique between yourself and so and so, uh, according to access to information uh, act that exists and other regulations, we would like to have that uh, access to the uh, we want for you to either authenticate um, or give us this, your version of this document. You go to the office of the city manager, say, city manager, on the 19th or the 9th of February 2018, you wrote a letter, we have an evidence of your email uh, which purport to be coming to, from yourselves. Can you verify for us if it does indeed uh, the email? So you, you, there's, no, uh, there's no flimsy, wishy-washy information that uh, we could have caught somewhere in the air. It comes from the city, it comes from authentic uh, structures. You don't need a, a, a cyber forensic expert to go and go into the server of the of, of, of the of the CI. You just phone these specific people that you are referring to. You phone office of the mayor, they will verify this. So Lima say no, I, I was not being I was not part of the, the scoring part. Because you have it. So if it is not, he must give you a proof that it is not. So this says uh, what we wanted to clarify and, and to the with the media fraternity that it's indeed the authentic the documentation and the correspondences that exist. Uh, you can yourself go and verify them through any other means that you, yeah, you, you, you that, that is free to, to, to be used. Uh, uh, actually, on that, just simply call in the web well. For instance, yeah, for simple, instance, simple, simple. I guess she was sitting there. Yeah. yeah, we know that they are making calls up and down. They are trying to change the papers. They are trying. They are they are desperately kicking and trying. So they are trying to say to Lindy, well, can you change and beg it and sign because we want to cook and, and can make the documents. She's refusing. You must call her. She's ready waiting for your call, members of the media. You must call her and say, Lindy, uh, you were part of, uh, of the people who were panelists representing the seat in this particular interview. Uh, what is happening? Uh, she will assist you. She will assist you nicely. Nicely. She will give you all the list, all the information that you need. Very honest. Right? You can even call Gerald Shengange. We are calling her to go. To go. We can even call him. Yesterday, you are not reporting. Yesterday in the morning, Soli says I was not part of the interview. Eh? Soli. Eh? Eh? Soli says to you, members of the... I was not part of the interview. When he realizes that, hey, he lied, he then says, no, I was part. Of the second leg, as if this is a is a Rothman's cup. It has a first leg and second leg. Rothman's cup, eh? <coughs> eh? Which is not true. Misleading you, you are leaving. It. Eh? Says no. I just entered in the interview. When you enter into an interview of a person that you have appointed to act, Marietta entered in those interviews as an acting uh, chief of staff. When she entered the interview, she was not from. Uh, she was not just an applicant. She was, she she was an acting. She was acting in that particular position, and that's why we are saying this question is very relevant. These are not leaks. These are not hoax emails. These are signed documents. Uh, that's why we are going to the police. Eh? We are going, when we leave here, we are becoming uh, Inspector Solim Simang. He said Mafidi will be in prison by now. He's here. Eh? He said no, no. There's corruption. Mapiti will be in prison. Mapiti is here, no orange uniform. But we said when we went to our conference of the ANC in December, 
that were fighting corruption. The Guptas are not in this country. It was serious. That one for them was a political statement to lull, to lull the people of Tuani into voting for them to make the ANC look like we are corrupt. If we are corrupt, why is Ramukopa enjoying himself? He has just finished his PhD, he's studying Ramukopa. PhD, is done with his PhD. Eh? Not in prison, he's not doing it through correspondence in, in, in Koshi Mamgur. He has done his PhD while he's working, doing his other things. Uh, Rodisa. I just want to know, according to regulations, should the EN actually form part of the NCD panel? Be required. We, we, we yeah, voted wanted, for it in yeah. cancer. No, I wanted to come to that because the regulations are here. The regulations are here because I wanted to come here before. They were published on the 13th of May 2013. Section 13 it said a municipal council must appoint a selection panel to make recommend for the appointment of candidate to vacant senior posts. He said the selection panel for the appointment of municipal manager must at least consist of, that's for municipal manager. Is very clear. The mayor will be the chair, the chairperson. A councillor designated by the municipal council. And at least one person who is not a councillor or a staff member of the municipal and who has expertise or experience in the, in the area of the advertised post. In this case, uh, and, 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 it, and it says, and in this case, the city appointed, I think it's one person from University of... Uh, Unisa. Unisa. Yeah. Now, now in this case, another, another the councillor because. and two, including the municipal manager. It says including the municipal manager. A panel contributing subsequently 